What's going on, Chavez Slovakia? Could you stop threatening your viewers, please? You see how like long the like little handle is, like hangs out the side of my pocket, and then when I want, I grip it, I fling it out like this. I wish you would not. <laughs> I wish you would stop doing that. This one lady went, "Oh my God, it looks so real." It does. <laughs> like, listen to it. <laughs> that sounds like a real ass thing. You can't pull this out around. Like, if the cops pull you over and you reach for your phone, they finna light your ass up. So we have a military base here at, uh, at in Las Vegas called Nellis Air Force Base. It's one of the biggest Air Force Base in the world. Yeah. And we have gate guards that carry, you know, the big guns and stuff, <laughs> you know. And so I was talking to one. And I pulled my, my phone out like this. He thought it was the funniest thing. <laughs> he laughed for so long. You're taking your life in your hand. I took. I brought my wife with me for this Lindsay video, Hello. so she couldn't complain, and that's the key to marriage. So if you want to stay married, make sure your wife has nothing to complain about. Happy wife, happy life. Mm -hmm. That's what they always say. Yeah. There's nothing that rhymes with husband. Happy husband, happy husband. bus bin. Happy person, have an excursion. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work as well. <laughs> okay, so anyways, this one's about, I was going to say pussy, but it's about cats. Tiny cats <laughs> <laughs> that can swim, and that's it. So let's get into some educational content. I'm very excited. Okay, let's do it. I love cats. Did you put your headphones on? I was going to say I love pussy. Yeah! <laughs> We're almost willing. Uh, I haven't been gone from the internet for a while, so I'm doing this video with my wife. And then I'm gonna do a, another video uh, just of dogs. Just like 10 minute video of dogs. <laughs> just of dogs? You just wanna get warmed up shooting vids. Okay. I just feel like that's a good idea. Okay. All right, let's get into it. I love re when I record half. Oh, oh. I love, re oh, oh, oh. I love re <laughs> when I record half of the video and then realize that I did not turn the microphone on. Fucking love that. Yeah. Okay, cats are often Fantastic. thought of as little guys that don't like water creatures that are willing to get violent over a little spritz mm -hmm. but that is not always the case the cat family is a big one with all different <laughs> play the video you dirty old man play the Every no cat i like likes to get wet huh <laughs> Different types of species that have evolved to all different types of environments, including ones that enjoyed a frequent dip so much they evolved semi aquatic traits. What? We're going to introduce you to two of these cat species. Okay. It was supposed to be three, but turns out the third one I had planned for is not semi aquatic. It's not actually down like that, even though it looks like it is. I'm going to introduce you to it anyway as an extra bonus. And then there's another extra bonus at the end that's okay. going to blow your fucking mind. I like okay. So I got two bonuses for you today. So. Buckle up, grab a snack, while I introduce you to some super sick tiny cats. You see? You see how she's okay with okay. people snacking in her video? I got snacks. Okay, I'm ready. All right. We grabbed it. Give me the good snack. Boom. Nobody wants these. Nobody wants your nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Worse. 10 and 11, respectively. <laughs> All right, let's do it. As always, you already know what the fuck is going on. Ooh. Don't want to bug my neighbor. As always, you already know what the fuck is going on. Gotta get the general information. I know what. Cats belong to the family Felidae within the order Carnivora. Cat family has been around for about 30 million years that we know of and evolved to become some of the most successful predators on the planet. You'll notice whenever we talk about peak mammalian evolution, it takes place sometime after 66 million years ago. Mammals have been around much longer than that, but weren't able to really find themselves until after the dinosaurs got fucking nerfed by the asteroid. <laughs> Before then, they were pretty much just rats Dang. spinning in the ground or in the trees, trying to make ends meet without getting fucking crushed to bits oh by a giant God. lizard. I'll talk more oh about this God. in my history of life series coming up, which I have mentioned multiple times. It's coming. I'm gonna like go through fun. each of the periods in Earth's history, one period per episode. Whoa! That sounds dope. Wait, we're gonna do that. That sounds dope. That sounds awesome. I just threw that in now because honestly, dinosaurs have been on my mind because I went to the Natural History Museum the other day and it was really <laughs> cool. I'd never been there before and I liked it a lot and I had a great time. Also, by the way, I'm 5'4". I'm not 4'1". I'm not 4'11". I'm oh, medium tiny. height. The bones were- Yeah, that's- She's so small. Yeah, that's really- Okay. And that's coming from two small people. What a little fella. You're like a little guy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why, you know, because there's like a picture frame back there. Yeah. I thought she was like 5'8 or something oh, like that. Oh, you thought that. she was normal height? That's a picture frame. You put your picture frames like almost six feet up. No. She's tiny, tiny. No, I definitely thought she was short, short though. I thought she was shorter than 5'4. Why are picture frames punching height? That doesn't even make any <laughs> sense. We're big. And this base just... She's small. 
How, where, how is she supposed to get stuff up any higher? You see her shelf is That's literally good, at freaking arm's but length. I'm just saying from a normal height person perspective, uh -huh. she looks tall because that's where the picture frames are. Oh, at. okay. Okay. So happens to be unnaturally large. I'm the average height for an American woman. Those were big. And this base just so happens to be unnaturally large. It's I'm the nice. average height for an American woman. I looked it up. So anyway, since their appearance about 30 million years ago, cats have spread out all over the planet to occupy a variety of carnivorous niches. Some Except fill the roles of Australia. apex predators, like the big cats you're familiar with, the lions, the tigers, the leopards, while others settled into more modest roles, catching rodents, birds, and even sometimes fish. Even sometimes a lot of fish, like a shit ton of fish. <laughs> and got real comfortable getting their little paws wet. Both semi-aquatic species I'll be introducing you to today have partially webbed feet that help them swim. That's so cool. Fish. Well, this adaptation might seem like a small one. It serves as the perfect segue to explain why I wanted to make this video in the first place. We've got a little purpose section today. We've gone through the evolution of whales from land to water in this video, and you might be familiar with that transition in other groups like marine reptiles and whatnot. Because they took place over such long periods of time, millions upon millions of years, it can be kind of hard to wrap your head around like, how the fuck did this turn into this and right. can lead to pretty major misunderstandings about what that transition looks like. You know, like mm -hmm. one day flippers appeared and now orcas are fucking up boats in Europe. No, that's <laughs> not how it happened. Dare I say a misunderstanding like this can lead people to deny evolution altogether. The small yes. changes building on top of each other over a really long time to make big changes can be kind of hard to visualize. So I figured why not make a video on some species that are just starting, not just starting, but you know, just just yeah, starting to understand. evolve some of these small changes. Yeah. And these species just so happen to be cute, tiny cats. This is not a cute animal video. This is but an evolution kind of, video. An evolution like of cute, of tiny is. cats video, but an evolution video nonetheless. That should have been the entire title of the video. An evolution video of cute, tiny, tiny cats. That's too, that's That'd too have been great. Long. I'd have clicked on it immediately. What do you have to say, my sweet? I just need you to finish unwrapping your thing because the sound Let's is Let's just move on. Am I saying that these cats are going to fully transition to water and become little, tiny, little kitty whales? No, I'm not that saying shit, cute. but that would be cool as fuck. Okay, right. I bet you're just itching at this point <coughs> to see the first water cat. So, allow me to introduce you to our teeniest, tiny little guy for today, the flat-headed cat. Yes, that is their name, what? due to the flat nature of their head. They're found in Thailand, Malaysia, Borneo, and Sumatra. Really? And we get to about three and a half pounds. Please do not That's lose your shit. Tiny. This is some serious stuff. Let's run over the quick facts and make this species semi white Flat-headed- We're currently losing it. The cats have partially webbed Look! feet, like I mentioned. They also have slightly backwards facing teeth to keep their wow. slippery prey in their mouth. And they've been seen swimming across rivers, a good portion of that time fully underwater. One record of a flat-headed cat in captivity noted that the cat showed more interest in a mouse in a pond than on land. They like wet mouse more than dry mouse. Stick yeah. into the brain. Flat-headed cats, like many small cats, are extremely elusive. Not much more is known about it because they seem to tend to stay away from human altered habitats and they are just so little. Can't even see them or you mistake <laughs> them for a rodent. Even with developing research technologies like better camera traps, which scientists set up in different areas to figure out what's going on there, you just don't see them. The flat head cats constantly MIA. Is that the That's Roomba? why his feeder just went off. Now she's trying to figure out how to get it's to it all this feeder. shit everywhere. Wait, real quick, before you eat, you want to say hi? Hi. Very round headed cat. Now oh, I got cat hair all over my face. Very on brand for the video. Okay, flat headed cat is constantly yes. MIA. Some researchers came up with a possible explanation for why this is, and it's the cutest thing ever. Objectively, it's objectively very cute. In 2013, they had placed camera traps all over a forest reserve in Malaysia. One mm -hmm. camera was placed about 15 inches off the floor, which I believe was the average height for all the cameras. And one night it got knocked over by a southern pigtailed macaque. This oh, guy, God. to a height of just four inches off the ground. What do you know? Two. Flat-headed cats, not one, but two, got captured on camera, They're which led the researchers small. to speculate the cameras are too high up. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. They're too little and just walk right under them, which is why we never see them. And this might seem pretty obvious, and you might be thinking, well, why not just put the cameras lower if you're trying to find little guys? Well, camera traps are often not species-specific. Like, if you're setting up cameras, it tends to be to look at a lot of different shit, and sometimes more concentrated to the larger species, like tigers or leopards. And then you just happen to find out other stuff about the other little guys because they're just there and so you see them and you learn about them too but i say put the fucking cameras on the floor we don't know a lot about them they seem to be endangered they're listed as endangered and we got to save them so we can see how this evolution plays out please let the cameras hit the floor 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 like you do like your inside yelling voice 
Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to like blow out their eardrums. I thought you were going to join in at one point. I really was enjoying it. I was it. ready. Yeah, no, we're going Did in. Did you even headbang with, with me? No, I just stared at you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't move at all. I also didn't know it was coming. So I was kind of surprised. Did you eat that Starburst? No. You actually ate it? She said garbage not. <laughs> Shut up, Jack. They seem to be endangered. They're listed as endangered. And we gotta save them so we can see how this evolution plays out. Please, let's figure out what we gotta do to save them. Put the cameras on the floor. Also, there was some good news from that study. Because the camera happened to be about a mile from a palm oil plantation. Stay with me. Flat-headed cats were initially thought to be extremely specific. Like, mm -hmm not tolerating human altered habitats at all, which okay. is unfortunately a bad thing because that's just not how the world is working right now. And so right. when yeah. you find out that an animal is actually closer to a human altered habitat than you initially thought, it suggests they might be more adaptable, more tolerant to changes in their environment, which is a good thing. <laughs> now that I said that out loud, that all sounded kind of depressing. More research it is- It was depressing. <laughs> and you're literally like, we're destroying their habitat, so they're yeah. dying. And yeah. that's awful, so. Maybe they're dying a little bit slower because they can live a little bit closer, but that's still not great news. I also don't tolerate changes to my habitat. At all. Mm. We'll work on it so you don't <laughs> die. All right? Thanks. You're wearing t-shirts now. That's a new, that's a new change. <sighs> Unwillingly. Yeah. Is needed. The next water cat on our lineup All is right, called water the fishing cat, cat. another one that is very on brand. They're actually closely related to the flat-headed cat through a common ancestor that was alive about four million years ago. They're also found hey. in Southeast Asia, but they are larger than their cousins, like 10 times larger. They're about oh. 30 pounds, like the size of a bobcat. So not That's exactly a tiny cat, but definitely still a little guy. Fishing cats, surprise, <laughs> surprise, like fish. They live in wetland habitats so they can eat fish and end up with a diet of about 76% fish. The other Jesus. portion consists 76. of animals like birds, rodents, some lizards. Like their cousins, they have mm, partially lizards. webbed feet that help them scoop up fish and also walk through their muddy wetland habitats like big snowshoes, lots right. of surface oh, okay. area. Another right, feature right, that right. supports the fishing cat's semi-aquatic lifestyle is their dual layered coat. The layer closest to their skin is super dense and thick and actually keeps their skin dry. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, then the other layer, the outer wet. Side, is what you see. Those spots and stripes display mm -hmm. their lovely pattern. They also have a It's like my wife's butt. Dual layered. What what does that mean? Well how would what would that mean for my butt to be dual layered? Muscular on the bottom, which gives all the strength. Mm -hmm. And then the outside is what you see. Mm -hmm. Like a fur coat. <laughs> I know. It's sensible. I'll never forget it. I appreciate the explanation. Yeah, there you go. I have a short tail, which acts as a rudder while they're swimming. There are lots of videos online of fishing cats hunting in the water, even kittens attempting to do so. That's stuff hilarious. That snatch fish right out of the walk and even plunge their entire head and torso in because they don't give a fuck. We understand more about their behavior, luckily, because they are not as elusive as their cousins, the flat cats. So they actually small. have more of a present relationship with humans. Like most wildcat species and other animals, the fishing cat population is impacted by a lot of different factors, like the illegal wildlife trade, habitat right. loss, and human wildlife conflict. Actually, Jesus. before I go any further, I just wanna say, I'm never gonna talk about human-caused threats to species, like the negative stuff, without providing any solutions to those problems that you can become a part of or Thanks. that you have access to. I hate when nature documentaries do that shit, you know, where they're like, look at this super cool animal, look at all the cool stuff it can do. Also, it's going extinct. Yeah. And you can make a difference. And then they end the fucking movie. Yeah, they give right, you nothing. Yeah. Like, That's cool. what What's-His-Face does. Yeah. Uh, David Attenborough. Yes. And all those nature he's, documentaries. And he's so good. At, you feel so responsible. You feel so guilty. And you're like, what exactly am I going to do about it? What am I responsible for? I put all of my trash in the dumpster. Right. And he's like, exactly. <laughs> put it in the... And then it's like the next episode starts. You're like, put it in the what? Put it in the what, David? Please tell me. You should be eating your trash. Ew. That's what you're making them do, huh? You think it's... <laughs> you think it's gross? 
Now I'm depressed. He gave me nothing and he set it up to me and now I'm sad. I genuinely think that's so lame because like 99% of the time there is something that you can do or an organization that is doing something that you can get involved in and they can just fucking name it. Like, why are you gatekeeping <laughs> conservation? Of course, right. education is an important aspect of it. You know, like being aware of the species existing and like the so problems cute. that they have. The solutions are just as important. So anyway, I'm not gonna do that to you. If I talk about the problems, I'm gonna offer a solution and give it to you straight. So. The fishing cat, like I had mentioned, is often involved in human wildlife conflict. People fearing them because they might be mistaken for one of the bigger cats, like leopards, just maybe seen as a smaller individual, and so they get mm. killed. They're often persecuted for killing poultry or other animals that provide someone economic value. This is a common problem with really any predators that live right. somewhere right. near human settlements. You might be familiar with the debate with wolves yep. here yeah, in the US. People just don't about. want them around for safety reasons and economic reasons. Killing livestock, huge economic loss, or potentially hurting or killing people. And so for the fishing cat, this problem can definitely be solved through local education, going to communities that experience this wildlife conflict and providing information on the ecology, the behavior of the species, explaining they're not a threat to humans at all and helping to right. mend that relationship. I found an organization while I was researching called the Fishing Cat Conservation Alliance that does just that. They also aim to conduct research to better understand how to best conserve the species. And they're involved in a lot of partner projects as well. So if you're interested in getting involved or even just sending them a quick donation so they can get their shit done, I'll put the link below. All right, this next cat, as I right. mentioned, I thought was Excellent. a semi-aquatic cat, but is not. It's called the Jaguar Wendy or the Otter Cat. That is a badass looking cat. We went from cute ass cats <laughs> to fucking, fucking Geronimo ass cats. Damn. Geronimo. That nigga don't give a fuck. Going in, Geronimo. Thanks for asking. I really appreciate the setup there. <laughs> I set myself up. I set myself up every time. <laughs> because it looks like an otter. So obviously for some That's reason cool. in my head, I was like, oh, they're semi-aquatic because they look like a fucking otter. They're called yeah. a fucking otter cat. But no, shit happens, I guess. I'm still going to talk about them because look at them. I need to talk about them. No semi-aquatic <laughs> adaptations to take note of here. So just okay. sit back and relax. Unless I somehow missed all of them while I was researching. Now I'm doubting myself. See, this is what happens. I literally can't believe, like, how the fuck is this cat not semi-aquatic? I okay. said, so, anyway, the Jaguarundi is found all throughout Central and South America, all the way from the border of US and Mexico to South Central Argentina. They get oh. to about 20 pounds and like to eat small vertebrates, particularly mammals such as rats and other rodents, really oh. whatever it can get its little paws on. Yeah. Despite having oh, jaguar nice. in their name, the Jaguarundi is most closely related to pumas or cougars or mountain lions. The cat, face, many names. You might remember yep. from my cheetah video that cheetahs, pumas, and jaguarundis share a common ancestor that was alive about 6.7 million years ago in Jesus. North America. Then there was a split and the ancestors of the jaguarundis and pumas headed south and the cheetahs headed west over the Bering Strait land bridge. So within the cat lineage, jaguarundis and pumas are very closely related to each other and you can kind of see yeah, similarities in their yeah. look. The you know, it's like when I look at somebody's picture of their baby and go, the nose, I yeah. see it in the nose. Yeah, like that's in your baby. Yeah. Makes sense. Jaguarundis are just definitely more pointy. You know, they're like an otter crossed with a sharp pencil. I've never worked with jaguarundis, <laughs> but I've worked with plenty of pumas and they're feisty as fuck. They spit like nobody's business. Ew. Based on pictures alone, I'm getting even more of a menacing vibe from Jaguarundis. Yeah. I feel like all the yeah, attitude man. of a cougar was just condensed into this small yeah. package that is the Jaguarundi, just yeah, ready to fucking explode complex. with absolutely no notice. You'll be happy yeah. to know they're considered least concern on the IUCN. They're just okay. chilling. That's really all I wanted to say just about them chilling. because they are not a semi-aquatic cat. And this is a semi-aquatic cat video, so I'm just gonna end that there. Okay, so it. remove the Jaguarundi from your head. Think back to just the flat-headed cat and the Got fishing it. cat. Two Got cats it. that made the transition to the semi-aquatic lifestyle and have okay. adaptations to show for it. Hopefully this helps to kind of visualize what this early transition looked like for the ancestors to whales or marine reptiles or fucking seals. Yeah, seals had to evolve too. Well, why did these changes happen in the first place? Like okay. if they are land animals, why not stay within the confines of land? Well, nature doesn't work on like it. They never man. give mm -hmm. shit to you straight. And often these changes happen because there's no other choice. Maybe mm -hmm. typical prey sources are disappearing yep. or there's too much competition with another species. All it really yeah. takes is one behavioral switch in a population to potentially have lasting impacts on their lineage. And of course, I have a cat example of this. The okay. bonus cat. One need not be introduced because they are literally the most famous animal on the planet, the lion. Yeah, there's a population of lions that have started to hunt seals. Let's start from the beginning. Whoa. Once upon a time, a population of lions lived at the skeleton coast seals. in Namibia and hunted mm -hmm. seals and hung out on the beach, chilling all day until the 1980s, when local farmers wiped out the population, human oh. wildlife conflict. The lions abandoned the coast for 20 years and returned in 2002, but they weren't hunting seals. They just went back to their usual 
ungulate shit. They were just doing the usual antelope song and dance. Were the sea lions gone forever? Well, since 2018, a small population of them started hunting seals again due to a drought that annihilated their ungulate prey sourcing, right. even timing when seals came in on waves and attacking them right at the shore. A team of researchers wow. was able to fit them with tracking collars, which track them. It's a common practice for observational <laughs> research of different animals, especially carnivores, and it doesn't negatively impact them at all. But because okay. of this, researchers have been able to track their whereabouts, figure out what they're eating, see potential new behaviors that they've never seen before, and it also Got prevents it. potential interaction with visitors, which is a good thing. They're able to tell when the lions enter a certain area so they can block off that part of the coast, keep mm -hmm. people away from them. This is a necessary thing because right. they've had interactions with people before. And one time, one of the lions <laughs> charged a vehicle and another time, one of the lions had a kill and got startled by some fishermen walking by and dragged the prey two and a half miles inland. Obviously that has a negative wow. impact on the research and Damn. the researchers want to keep them at the coast, see what the fuck happens. So right. I'm trying to avoid that. This lion population serves as a perfect- He said, I'm leave <laughs> i gotta go right pick the example of a behavior change that could end up impacting the lineage over millions of years am sure. i saying that's gonna happen no but it's cool as fuck to think about like what right. characteristics will be more beneficial to this population in their yeah. gene pool will they be drastically different from the inland lions and mm -hmm. lead to unique adaptations it is right. fun to wonder it is fun to speculate and that's it for today if you excellent dude i'd take that on the parlay i think that's pretty dope you know i think that'd be great um wife yes Thanks for joining me in this video. Thanks for actually having me in this video yeah. and not just promising to have me in the video and then not actually having me in the video and shooting the video by yourself and then I wake I'm up sensing, to you shooting the video. What I'm sensing here is that you want to talk about her undulations and how that helps <laughs> you keep track of the points she's making and I agree. I think the way that she sometimes points with her hands like this and talks like that and then the, shoots the video the, and the camera in her face it just is like, yes, I am listening. Yeah. I, am, I am learning the same things you're learning. It really helps my ADHD brain. Like, yeah. keep up. like every time my brain starts to kind of wander Buzz off, she's like, like Boom. pay attention. It's not just because they're cute. Yes, they're <laughs> cute, but focus on the facts. And you're like, right, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just I kept it. imagining a small little thing in the water, just That's snatching okay. that little, little fishies. You seen that one with the cat that catches the fish and it's prancing and the fish is like fighting for its life, but the cat's like smiling, so it's cute. No. Oh, damn. You got to see it. That's, that came, came to my brain several times that she would clap. And be like, hey, focus. I like it too, though, because like she also clearly gets distracted. So it's right. like the blind leading the blind, oh, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got to the finish line. We uh, made it. Hopefully you made it too. We're going to do one more of these videos for our Skittin's channel, I think. Or maybe Daily Dose of Internet. What no, are you feeling gonna today? No, we're going to do one of these. You are not going to gatekeep Lindsay Vids. Gatekeep, girl boss. Gaslight gatekeep, girl boss. That's what it is. Eat hot chip charge phone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks All right, guys. for watching. Shut up. It's my video. I love you guys so much. I almost <laughs> knocked your coffee over. I almost tipped that shit don't, over. Don't do it. I need it. I need this. <laughs> Bye. I love you guys. We'll see you guys around. Uh, I haven't been on the internet for a while, so there's a couple trends. There's a, this video somebody tagged me in of people doing AI challenges on TikTok. Mm -hmm. So I might watch that too, but I'm gonna follow up with the dog video first, I think. Okay. Okay. You gonna join me for any of those? No. <laughs>